Kids, W5. It's something that will stay with me forever. Therapy to correct your sexual preference in the Lord's name. Marriage between a man and a woman is the ideal. It's morally and ethically wrong to force somebody to be who they're not. Are you okay now? I'm, I'm not okay. And... The only people that really like us is us. Calling the plays and taking the heat. And he is absolutely furious. Unfortunately, you've got referees making bad decisions. We are humans. We do make mistakes. CTV's W5 with Sandy Ronaldo, Rick Westhead, and Lisa Laflamme. Here is Sandy Ronaldo. Hello, and thanks for joining us. Time was when a gay person in this country was considered to be breaking the law or needed psychiatric help. The supposed cure? Something called conversion therapy, designed to make gay people straight. The consequences often deep psychological scars, even suicide. But conversion therapy has been debunked, except in some religious circles, where it exists often underground. And now there are calls for the federal government to make the practice illegal in this country. Toronto student Matt Ashcroft always knew he was gay but struggled with his sexuality because his dad made it clear he didn't want a gay son. My dad was not really the kindest person to me. Um, he did not treat me with a lot of respect. Um, it forced me kind of into the closet a lot when I was growing up, and I had to figure out ways that I would be more masculine. You went looking for a way yeah. to be the type of man that you thought your father wanted you to be, which is not a gay man. Yeah. And conversion therapy found you. What was it about what they were offering that appealed to you? They gave me hope, but on the flip side of that, what it really was is they gave me a sense of shame and fear. Conversion therapy, it is based on outdated and unproven medical beliefs and is mostly practiced by Christian groups under the radar. Desperate to please his father, Matt searched online and found an American group that he thought would fix him, make him straight. And they were saying, oh, we have a solution for you to uh, go into um, this camp and it will change your life forever. The weekend camp in Pennsylvania was called Journey Into Manhood. W5 found the group online. The website promises to help people who have experienced unwanted same-sex attractions and lists examples of underlying issues like not feeling man enough or feeling wounded or smothered by women. They took a, uh, a punching bag horizontally on the ground, made, made me picture my father, and I had a baseball bat in my hand. I remember hitting it repeatedly over and over, screaming, swearing, cursing. Matt says he was told the rationale behind the exercise was to overcome a protective mother and absent father. The experience was dark and distressing. I remember me stopping and then they brought out a mirror and I was crying looking at myself in the mirror. I was just, it was so tiring. It was, it was, it was hard. And shockingly, he says, attendees were forced to watch as another camper was made to relive a sexual assault. They pretended to be him and his older cousin, act out the rape in front of him while saying the words that he was saying at the time. So I saw this guy yelling and screaming at the top of his lungs, stop, 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 stop. I was, I was blown away. I just couldn't believe that I saw that. And it's just something that will stay. <sighs> it's something that will stay with me forever. Sounds like abuse on so many different levels. Yeah. Yeah. Matt says he left the U.S. camp deeply scarred, but unchanged. The experience didn't alter his sexual orientation. This was back in 2014. 
W5 contacted Journey into Manhood. In an email response, they said they do not offer therapy, although admitted doing what they call, quote, emotional role play with Matt, but said it was not how we described it. They also claimed that they would never address a sexual assault issue with a reenactment. Five years later, conversion therapy was still being practiced in the U.S. In fact, W5 went undercover to attend a National Conference of Conversion Therapists meeting in Minneapolis. Outside, there were protests against the controversial practice. They try to rewire you, um, the way of thinking, the way of... Uh, try to make you believe that this is not something natural. I'll never forget that. While inside, there were testimonials from former gays and lesbians. Like, what are you doing? You can't leave homosexuality. You can't, you know, not be scarlet. These are who you truly are. And I told them, I said, I want Jesus more. But there are many throughout this room, out of homosexuality in particular, or out of transgenderism. I, I began to watch as I found my strength in God instead of in other men. I began to see other men uh, as my brothers. There were also nice-sounding people eager to help us find conversion therapists in Canada. And if you'll just write a little note, help in Canada next oh, okay. week, I'll make some inquiries for you. That would be amazing. Yeah. W5 learned this type of conversion therapy is available in Canada and thriving underground. Just ask Harper Perrin, someone who's experienced it firsthand. We moved around a lot. My parents were always very centered in the church, um, very religious in the evangelical church. Right, um, and influenced you, no doubt. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That's where a lot of my fundamental understanding of like the world and um, everything kind of came from. Right. And myself as well. At around age 12, Harper began to have same-sex feelings. Eventually, Harper found the courage to come out at 18. Your parents' reaction? Uh, I think they were very surprised. Um, they were the parents that were advocating against gay marriage in 2003, 2004. Surprised, but determined to fix their child's homosexual feelings, Harper's parents and friends convinced Harper to seek conversion therapy or change therapy. Harper found it through a worship leader at the River Fellowship Church in Langley, British Columbia in 2012. Harper said strategies were used like pulling hair and snapping a rubber band, meant to associate discomfort with same-sex thoughts, supposedly to change sexual orientation. A lot of what those therapy modalities had in mind was behavior modification, changing the way that I walked, changing the way that I talked, being very mindful of my body and making sure that it was a masculine expression. And did you want to be fixed? Well, I hated myself so much, I wanted to not be gay. And I would have given anything at that point. W5 reached out to River Fellowship about Harper's story. They told us their church doesn't offer any therapy services, conversion or otherwise. Your information, they said, is incorrect and not applicable. And even if it were, regardless of what was under discussion, we would never betray the member confidentiality of anyone connected with our church as a matter of professional conduct. Sounds about right. Yeah. Why do you think they would take this position? <sighs> because I think that uh, people who are involved in conversion therapy, number one, they don't call by that name. And if you ask them, no, that's not, they're not going to be like, oh, yeah, we're trying to change people. No, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, in an addictions model, decrease the amount of attractions that they feel towards people of the same sex. People who you thought were helping you weren't actually doing that. Mm-hmm. I was very close to suicide because I, I just didn't want to... All, the, all of the messages that were coming at me were telling me that I intrinsically was damaged and wrong. It's estimated that 20,000 Canadians like Harper and Matt have been exposed to conversion therapy. It's currently not illegal in Canada, but mainstream medical and research organizations say it's unethical. The challenge today in Canada is uh, many organizations that practice conversion therapy don't call it that. They start to talk about um, um, sexual ori orientation change efforts, or they'll relate the story of, of people who voluntarily come to them looking for support to change. Christopher Wells is the Canada Research Chair for the Public Understanding of Sexual and Gender Minority Youth. 
give me an example of how it works. It has ranged in practices uh, over the years, all the way from things like a lobotomy to chemical castration to electric shock therapy. Today's uh, more modern forms of conversion therapy are things like um, aversion therapy, uh, uh, regressive role play, talk therapy, even things like uh, exorcism that still happen. Although most groups in Canada once affiliated with conversion therapy now say they do not practice it, researcher Christopher Wells says the therapy has just gone underground. It's difficult in Canada, for example, to um, walk down Main Street and be able to find somebody uh, openly practicing or advertising conversion therapy uh, services. Today, if you go to the website of Journey Canada, which in the past offered change therapy under the name Living Waters, it refers to Christian support groups and promises, we do not seek to change the sexual orientation of the people who participate in our programs. W5 wanted to see if Journey Canada really had changed its practices. In late 2019, we signed up an actor pretending to seek therapy. We paid a $300 enrollment fee and he attended several classes. Hi, is this the fireside room? Yes. yes? Hi. I'm Irving. Nice to meet you, you, Keith. Yes. Nice to meet you, Keith. Awesome. When the actor arrived, nothing seemed sinister. People were welcoming and supportive. They even offered to pray for him to overcome the shame he told them he felt over his homosexuality. Father I, and Holy Spirit, I thank you that you have um, made a way for him and all of, all of the, the sin and the things that are wrong. Three different colors. But our undercover operative was given a binder that reveals a different story. Reading material that promises an awakening of heterosexual attraction and a shift in sexual orientation. It describes in detail what can make people have unwanted same-sex attraction, like surrounding ourselves with people of the same gender, hoping some of their personality and character rubs off on us. The intensity of the attractions may change. Okay. There are definitely men who have same-sex attraction who are, who are happily married with families and children. How that um, gets managed and how God helps us deal with that has changed. Yeah. So that it doesn't become... The reading material also offers advice to reduce same-sex attraction by finding love, acceptance, and belonging in my relationship with Christ and in healthy non-sexual relationships with close friends. W5 formally asked Journey Canada for an interview to address the idea of shifting orientation. They declined our request and responded with a statement that reads in part, We do not pursue nor promise sexual orientation change. We help people develop deeper spiritual lives. We are a prayer ministry and we would pray with anyone who is seeking to integrate their sexual behavior with their faith and values. After about 18 months following the U.S. Journey into Manhood program online, Matt Ashcroft finally gave up trying to change his sexual orientation. So what was the breaking point for you? I, I just was tired of being attacked by these people. It was hard to leave because it was like essentially joining a cult where everybody had to do and feel the same way or else you're not a part of this. Coming up. Any kind of therapy can have a negative outcome. Defending their methods in the name of God. It's a detrimental practice. It's a tragic practice. When W5 continues. Medical student Harper Perrin seems to have it all. A promising career, a love of music, and a loving partner in Josh. But a few years ago, Harper's parents and friends insisted Harper undergo conversion therapy. Instead of taking away same-sex attractions, the experience caused feelings of shame and self-loathing. Are you okay now? I'm, I'm not okay. I'm not. Um... I'm the best I've ever been, but it still has long lasting reach into my whole life, unfortunately. Slow down, boys. 
David had a different experience. He's now married to a woman and is the father of four. But from the time he was young, David lived as a gay man. What was it like in high school being gay? <sighs> I, I wasn't, I couldn't tell anybody. I lived in a farming community. David kept his sexuality secret until he moved to Toronto as an adult. I started partying in Toronto and met the gay community there, and uh, it was very accepting. So I was openly just being a part of the community. And you were happy at that point? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, it was. I was definitely happy at that point. It was, uh, it was the first time I felt accepted. So why didn't you continue within the gay community? Um, I reached a point in my life where it wasn't satisfying anymore. It wasn't, the, the, that wasn't my identity. Sexuality, it was only a small piece of your identity. And I had spent so much time wrapped up in trying to define myself and my sexuality, I lost, I lost focus on myself. At age 27, David began seeing a therapist for what he saw as a sexual addiction to help reprogram the way he thought. Every time I'd reach like a, maybe a pivotal moment or he could see the emotion changing physically, like he noted, noted those and asked me what I was feeling. And so I had to train my thinking so that I didn't fall into that thinking again. David went to therapy for two and a half years and he says it changed him. Do you ever think about having a gay relationship? Um, it's, not, it's not something that crosses my mind anymore. David has particular insight into the debate around the controversial practice. His mother, Anne Gillies, is a trauma therapist and a proponent of what she calls choice or change therapy. So if that's true for him, it certainly can be true for others who are wanting that type of, of expression and being able to talk to the therapist and, and walk through that. Gillies, who was in private practice for 20 years and has a PhD in professional counseling from Christian Liberty University in Virginia, argues because sexuality is fluid, it can be actively influenced. It's a view the mainstream medical community opposes. From the the perspective of the Canadian Psychiatric Association, clearly, um, and from my perspective, so we oppose conversion therapy in its entirety. Dr. Gary Shamovitz is a professor in the Department of Psychiatry at McMaster University and president of the Canadian Academy of Psychiatry and the Law. The reason why conversion therapy is wrong-headed, apart from the fact that science is faulty, is it's morally and ethically wrong to force somebody to be who they're not, to pathologize essentially the human condition. Both the Canadian Psychiatric Association and the Canadian Psychological Association share the same position. So you're saying their information is incorrect? Some of it is, yes. Even though it's the Canadian Psychological yes. Association? And when you think that they are still saying the born that way and it is innate and that that is no longer even part of the whole talk. As for the harm survivors say conversion therapy causes, Gilly says. Any kind of therapy can have a negative outcome. But they're talking, I mean, listen to this, distress, anxiety, depression, negative self-image, a feeling of personal failure, difficulty sustaining relationships, sexual dysfunction. Most of those people had all of those those elements. But they're saying, the CPA is saying therapy. conversion therapy contributes to that. And it's not always backed up by research. Dr. Shamovitz co authored a Canadian Psychiatric Association report on treating LGBTQ people. The paper emphatically opposes the use of reparative or conversion therapy, but leaves room to treat people who are struggling with their sexuality. What if someone was to come to you and say, I'm gay, and I don't want to be gay anymore? Help me. Is so when people come forward like that, it's because these individuals have experienced shame, bullying. So I think the important thing then, certainly as a psychiatrist, is to talk to the person. 
This is not about conversion therapy, but it's understanding, helping the person be who they are. Chris Wells wants to help people be who they are, and he's on a mission. The Canada Research Chair for the Public Understanding of Sexual and Gender Minority Youth wants to make conversion therapy illegal in Canada. And he started by lobbying his hometown of Edmonton. And they want to do something about it. And that's why I think you're seeing municipalities realize that there's widespread public support for these kinds of bans because there are very few people who believe that there's something wrong with being an LGBTQ person in a Canadian society. In 2019, the Professor of Child and Youth Care approached City Council about formalizing a first-of-its-kind bylaw that bans conversion therapy and covers not just private practice or business, which other cities like Vancouver have done, but goes further to include places of worship. Some religious groups were outraged. Jojo Ruba is a Calgary youth pastor and a Christian advocate and speaker. The, the motion that we're discussing here is to target the belief that if you think sexual orientation can be changed or that a sex should be saved for a husband and wife, the people who believe those things will no longer be allowed to practice. There was vocal opposition to the ban. Do you understand where they're coming from? And I think what happens is the more we start to see opposition show up like they did in Edmonton to uh, try to stop these bylaws, I think exactly the opposite happened. Ann Gillies was one of those who opposed the ban. The retired trauma therapist traveled from her farm north of Toronto to Edmonton to share her concerns. For you, it's all about choice. You're not suggesting that homosexuality is bad. I'm not suggesting it's good or bad, but I think there are people, and certainly I would say from a religious and uh, moral perspective, I do have a belief system that I think that um, marriage between a man and a woman is the ideal. Anne's opposition to the Edmonton ban was shared by others. For people like me who believe that, who seek counseling, what it actually tells them is you're no longer allowed to find that counseling. Jojo Ruba, along with Anne Gillies, spoke out against the Edmonton ban on conversion therapy. Are you planning to send bylaw officers at every church, synagogue, mosque, or temple to make sure they're not praying the gay away, as Dr. Chriswell said? Well, I think the bylaw needs to be replaced to specifically actually target the harmful practices that you and I both oppose. And frankly, those people committing those kinds of acts should be targeted. But this is not what this bylaw does. It's a broad attack on people who believe differently about marriage and sexuality, which in our country we have a right to, to believe. Despite the opposition, it came down to a vote on December 10, 2019. On third a reading, bylaw 19061. Uh, please vote and display the vote. That is unanimously carried. Edmonton becomes the first city in Canada to include religious organizations in a wide-ranging ban on conversion therapy. It comes with a $10,000 fine, although enforcement will be complaint-based. And Edmonton may just be the beginning. In Ottawa, in December of 2019, Federal Justice Minister David Lametti received a mandate letter from the Prime Minister to amend the criminal code to ban the practice of conversion therapy. What exactly does that cover? You make it a criminal offence uh, to uh, employ conversion therapy on someone else. Uh, there are religious groups who've expressed the fear that a ban would uh, dampen freedom of speech and their right to religious freedoms. Are, are, are those concerns something that you're taking into consideration? Well, obviously, we, we will uh, balance, uh, we will do our, we will analyze any prospective legislation according to the Charter. But there's also uh, a right to, to be secure in one's person under Section 7 of the Charter. And, Frankly, my focus here as, as Minister of Justice is on the people who are the victims of this practice. Uh, they're, they're young, they're vulnerable. Um, no right in the Charter gives you the right to do this to another person. The law will also send a signal to those who go outside the country for conversion therapy. It's a detrimental practice. It's a tragic practice. And so because we've criminalized it in Canada, it's easier for us to say, and don't go looking for this elsewhere. You're, you're just you're you're going to you're going to end up doing damage to yourself. So there is the political will to make this happen and I, make it happen soon. I think that's absolutely right.
Medical student Harper Perrin says conversion therapy caused years of suffering. Are you still worried about the frightening feelings that may surface? Yeah. I don't have any in terms of like that tension that I experienced for so many years in conversion therapy. I don't have that feeling of like dread of like there's something wrong with me and there's something shameful and I want to die all the time. That part has come completely like I've been able to like get a good handle on that. And now I just have beliefs about myself that are positive and that I'm a good person and that my sexuality is good. And there's still a lot to come in that regard, specifically with sex and sexuality, but, um, but I really like me now. Yeah. Well, conversion therapy and the debate about sexuality has intruded into the conservative leadership race with comments by two possible candidates. Richard DeCary, a longtime Tory insider, said being gay is a choice. And Derek Sloan, a conservative MP, said the science is unclear about what makes a person gay. Sloan also said that transgender children should be allowed to undergo conversion therapy.